Today my sermon is about fire from heaven. Have you heard about fire coming down from heaven? Yes. You have? Yes. And there's, there's uh, places in the Bible about that. And I'm going to start with Gen Genesis 4. It doesn't say fire came down from heaven here, but that's what I've been told happened. We have the older brother and the younger brother. And you probably know who they are. What's the older brother's name in Genesis 4? Cain. Cain. Now what's the younger brother's name? Abel. Abel. Now, what was Cain's occupation? He was a farmer. He grew fruit and vegetables. And what was uh, Abel's occupation? Shepherd. That's right. He was a shepherd. And they both worshipped the Lord, and they both brought their offerings. And Cain got to thinking, well, Abel is a shepherd, and he has the sheep. I'm a farmer, and I have fine produce. I have fine uh, uh uh, items that uh, that God has blessed and I'm going to offer them to God because they're the best I have and so he put them on the altar and offered them up to God and God did not accept it hmm. Abel put his offering on the altar and God accepted it and I understand from reading and study that the sign was God sent a little bit of fire from heaven to consume the offering. It says in verse 2, he says, And Abel was a keeper of sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. And in the process of time it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground and offering unto the Lord. And Abel, he also brought the firstlings of his flock and the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. But unto Cain and his offering he had not respect. And Cain was very wroth, and his countenance fell. And the Lord said unto Cain, Why art thou wroth? And why is your countenance fallen? If thou doest well, shalt thou not be accepted? And if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door. And unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. And Cain talked with Abel his brother, and it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel his brother and slew him. You know the story. Where is your brother, Cain? I don't know. Am I his keeper? And God told Cain what his punishment was, that he was to be cast off. And Cain said, that, that, that punishment is too much for me, Lord. And if anybody find me, they're going to kill me. So God put a mark on Cain that meant if anybody killed Cain they would suffer the same consequence. Isn't that where things really get started? People go their own way and they do what they want to rather than what God wants them to do. They uh, they think, well, this should be okay. I don't see anything wrong with it. So let's move on to Genesis 19. And this we know for sure is fire. Genesis 19, 
You're familiar with that story. Lot was sitting at the gate of the city of, anybody know the name of that city? Sodom. Mm-hmm. Sodom. And two angels came. And they were planning to camp out in the street of Sodom. And Abraham's nephew Lot knew what would happen to them if they camped out in the street. So he invited them to his house. And the men of Sodom came and demanded that Lot surrender those men to them so they could have knowledge with them. And that, wasn't, that didn't mean a discussion either. If you have the whole sentence, they wanted to have carnal knowledge with them. And the angels told Lot that the next day Sodom would be rained with fire from heaven and the whole place would be burned and destroyed and told him if you have anyone in the city bring them here tonight and they'll they'll depart with you so he had two daughters that were married and so he went over to his daughter's homes and met with his sons-in-law saw his grandchildren for the last time and he begged them but they thought he was a crazy man and they laughed at him have you ever been serious and have someone laugh at you Ooh, that makes my blood boil sure it does yours too when you have a serious, serious matter to present and you know it's from the Lord, you do. Well, th yes, that's right, love them anyway, but this was so serious, he knew they were going to die. The so sons-in-law, the daughters, and the grandchildren. And they left the city. They were slow to do it. The angels had to take them by the hand and lead them out. And they heard that destruction start. They heard the fire coming down. And Lot's wife, it was more than she could take. She left all her stuff in Sodom. She had one of the nicest homes in Sodom with some of the best furniture and the best anointments and besides that her daughters were there and her grandchildren and she turned around and looked at what happened to Mrs. Lot yeah she became a uh, pillar of salt a pillar of salt that was the end of her and from then on Lot lived in a cave with his two daughters that he had with him and it was a terrible life a terrible existence and he thought he had taken the better land when he and his uncle Abraham divided Now let's move over to 2 Kings. You may not be familiar with this story. S 2 Kings 1. The king of Israel was Ahaziah, 
and he fell down through some lattice work in his upper chamber that was in Samaria and he was sick. You know, it hurts to fall through a roof. And he sent messengers to inquire of the god of Ekron to go over to Ekron and inquire of Beelzebub as to whether he was going to get well or whether he was going to die. But the angel of the Lord told Elijah the Tishbite <laughs> to go and meet those messengers from the king and told him what they were up to. And he said to them, "Is it not because there is a, is it not because there is a, not a god in Israel that ye go to inquire of Beelzebub, the god of Ekron?" Now therefore, thus saith the Lord, Thou shalt not come down from that bed on which thou art gone up, but ye shall surely die. And Elijah departed, and those messengers went back to the king. Well, you're sure back quick. And they told him that they'd met Elijah. And he had told the king he was going to die. He was not going to come off that bed of sickness. He was going to die because he had sent his messengers to Ekron to inquire of Beelzebub. Well, the king, being the king, he wanted to talk to Elijah. And when you're a king, what do you do? And you want to find somebody and bring them in, you send the army. And so he sent an army captain of 50 and his 50 to see Elijah. And we see in, uh, in um, 1 Kings 1 9, it said, Then the king sent to him a captain of 50 with his 50, and he went up to him, and behold, he sat on top of an hill. And he spoke unto him, Thou man of God, the king hath said, Come down. He's used to telling people what the king had to say. And what was he used to? He was used to people, Yes, sir. Yes, yes, yes. But Elijah answered and said to the captain of fifty, If I be a man of God, then let fire come down from heaven and consume thee and thy fifty. And there came down fire from heaven and consumed him and his fifty. Wonder how long it took for the king to hear that that happened. And you know, have you ever done something that didn't work and so you try the exact same thing again? Oh yes, yes I have. <laughs> and, and does it usually work the second time you try it? Sometimes, exactly. sometimes. Yeah. So, verse 11. Again, also he sent unto him another captain of fifty with his fifty. And he answered and said to him, O man of God, thus hath the king said, Come down quickly. He didn't just say, Come down. He said, Come down quickly. And Elijah answered and said unto him, If I be a man of God, let fire come down from heaven and consume thee and thy fifty. And the fire of God came down from heaven and consumed him and his fifty. So, it didn't work twice, so what did the king do? Third time. Third time's a charm, isn't it? That's what my mother used to say. Verse 13, And he sent again a captain of the third fifty with his fifty. I wonder what those fifty thought about going on this journey. <laughs> And the third captain of fifty went up and came and fell on his knees before Elijah and besought him and said unto him, O man of God, I pray thee, let my life and the life of these fifty thy servants be precious in thy sight. Behold, there came fire down from heaven and burnt up the two captains 
of the former 50s with their 50s. Therefore, let my life now be precious in thy sight. And the angel of the Lord said unto Elijah, Go down with him, be not afraid of him. And he arose and went down with him unto the king. Do you think that captain was nice to Elijah all the way to the king's house? I think, I think he was. And Elijah told the king he was going to die. And the main reason he was going to die was because of his indiscretion of sending his messengers to inquire of the god of Ekron, Beelzebub. God is jealous, you know. He's not a respecter of persons. He has his way. And it's God's way or no way. And rightly so. And let's look at uh, 1 Chronicles 21. And David went in the name of the Lord and he came to Ornan and uh, oh verse uh, verse 21 and went out on the threshing floor who bowed himself to David with his face on the ground David said to Ornan, Grant me the place of this threshing floor that I may build an altar therein unto the Lord. Thou shalt grant it to me for the full price that the plague may be stayed from the people. And Ornan said unto David, Take it to thee and let my lord the king do that which is good in his eyes. Lo, I give thee the oxen also for the burnt offering and the threshing instruments for wood and the wheat for the meat offering I give it all. And King David said unto Ornan, Nay, but I will verily buy it for the full price, for I will not take that which is thine for the Lord, nor offer burnt offerings without cost. So David gave Ornan the, the place 600 shekels of gold by weight. 600 shekels of gold. That's a fortune today. And David built there an altar unto the Lord and offered burnt offerings and peace offerings and called upon the Lord. And he answered unto him from heaven by fire upon the altar of burnt offering. And the Lord commanded his angel and he put up his sword again into the sheaf thereof. So that was a sign that God had approved. That God had accepted the offering and that everything was going to be all right. So look at Second Chronicles, chapter 7. There we go. Chapter 7. 
This is on the occasion, we're, uh, 2 Chronicles 7, chapter 1, when the temple in Jerusalem was completed and dedicated, and Solomon had made an end of praying. He had a dedicatory prayer. And there was a burnt offering there, all set out. It says, at the end of praying, the fire came down from heaven and consumed the burnt offering, and the sacrifices, and the glory of the Lord filled the house. And the priest could not enter into the house of the Lord because the glory of the Lord had filled the Lord's house. And when all the children of Israel saw how the fire came down and the glory of the Lord upon the house, they bowed themselves with their faces to the ground upon the pavement and worshiped and praised the Lord, saying, For he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. What a sign to see that glory of the Lord come in and fill the temple and the fire come down from heaven. And then in Job 1.16, Job was a very wealthy man, and he owned much. And this is the opening where disaster happened. And while the one left to report the disaster was yet speaking, another disaster was reported, and another. How can you hold up? How could Job hold up under all that? The destruction. Uh, and, and verse 16, While he was yet speaking, there came another and said, The fire of God is fallen from heaven and hath burned up the sheep and the servants and consumed them, and I only am escaped alone to tell thee. I don't think that fire came from God. God had loosed the devil because he said, Job can take the test. And, and here is, here is uh, the discourse that happened, Job. One six. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and upright man, one that feareth God and escheweth evil? Then Satan, what title do we give Satan? What do we call him? We call him the accuser of the brethren. When the devil's going to talk about you, he's not going to say anything nice about you at all. Then Satan answered the Lord and said, Doth Job fear God for naught? Hast thou not made a hedge about him and about his house and about all that he hath on every side. Thou hast blessed the work of his hands, and his substance is increased in the land. But put, put forth thine hand now, and touch all that he has, and he will curse thee to thy face. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, all that he hath is in thy power. Only upon himself put not forth thine hand. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord, 
and he started all these disasters on Job. Job lived, and Job prospered. I wonder what Satan says about us when he goes and tells the Lord what we're doing. He's the proverbial tattletale, even if he has to make stuff up and lie about us. He will. Our time is coming to an end. Let's look at Revelation 13, 13. And let's begin with verse 7, Revelation 13, 7. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him, whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. If any man hath an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with a sword must be killed with a sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon, and he exercised all power of the first beast before him, and causeth the earth, and them which dwell in the earth, to worship the first beast, whose deadly wound was healed, and he doth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men, and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had the power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by a sword and did live. So, the false Christ... Well, have it appear that fire comes down from heaven. Don't be fooled. Jesus is coming again, and his feet will not touch the ground. That's right. So, someone claiming to be Christ, and they cause fire to come down from heaven, believe it not. Don't go anywhere near it. Don't go anywhere near it. If there's temptation, stay away. There was this big Texas rancher that had a big ranch, and he was interviewing drivers that would uh, drive him around the ranch because he had to inspect the ranch, inspect the fences, and inspect the, the cattle and, and, and everything else. And he had three people that were being hired, and they were all together, and he asked them, how close to this big arroyo with an 800 foot drop can you drive my Jeep with me in it and I can still be safe? And the first one said, I can drive within six feet of that arroyo and keep you perfectly safe. Not to be outdone, the second driver says, I can drive you within two feet of that arroyo and keep you perfectly safe. And the third man applying for the job said to the uh, owner of the ranch, the rancher, he says, if I'm driving you in the Jeep near the Arroyo, we won't ever get close enough to it to find out how close I can get. <laughs> yeah, he got the job. <laughs> Don't play with temptation. 
Don't play with temptation. I'm going to tell a family story now. I was a little kid, and it was the very first time I ever saw my mother spank my sister. My, my mother did not hand out spankings easily. But boy, I witness this. Do you know what my sister was doing? No! She was lighting matches in the house. Oh. Don't play with fire. Don't fool with temptation. Don't get close to it. And let's look at Revelation 20. This is my final verse. I know I've gone over a little bit. And we'll begin uh, verse 7. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan will be loosed out of his prison, and he shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. And they went up on the breadth of the earth, encompass the camp of the saints about and the beloved city and fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them and the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are and they shall be tormented day and night forever and ever And that term forever and ever is figurative. Have you ever used that? And I sat in that dentist chair forever and ever while he worked on me. It wasn't going to end. That salesman stopped by my house last night and he was there forever and ever. He was never going to leave. That my friends, is the final death. And it says in Titus that the wicked will be ashes under our feet. Now, are ashes on fire? No, they grow cold. Sodom that we heard about was burned with an eternal fire. Is Sodom still on fire today? No, you can go there and, uh, and you, can, you can see the ashes. A friend of mine, Doug Batchelor, he's a pastor. He, he broadcasts on television nowadays. I attended his uh, ordination into the gospel ministry. He has been there to where Sodom was. There's all kind of sulfur spread around. And he took out a little Bic lighter and held it up to some of that sulfur. And you could smell it. You could smell what Sodom smelled like. P.U. That was strong. That cleared my nostrils and burned my eyes. Eternal fire is nothing to play with. That lake of fire is real. And people will be consumed and then the earth will be made new and God will wipe away all tears he'll visit each of us personally and wipe away all tears and the former things will not come to mind we will live with God we will be his people he will be his God and there'll be no need there 
for sun by day or for noon by night because God himself will be will provide the light for the city of God and there'll be no night there there'll be no need to go to sleep how about that we we'll have our day and our night to praise God from whom all blessings flow thank you everyone thank you for listening and when you think about fire coming down from heaven that's serious business